Hey Redeemer family, wherever you're watching this all over the world, thank you so much for being here. I'm John, I'm one of the pastors, and uh, today's daily word is in the middle section of Luke chapter 1. So before we get started, a couple of things first. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button and the bell, go ahead and do that please. That allows you to never miss anything that we miss or that we produce here with uh, with Redeemer. Now, I've organized today's teachings around two headings. The first one is Gabriel visits Mary, verses 26 to 38, and Mary visits Elizabeth, verses uh, 39 to 56. Now, the big idea of this section is the supernaturalness of the birth of Jesus. Now I've got my notes here, I've got my Bible. Let's jump in. Gabriel visits Mary. Six months after Mary conceives, Gabriel goes to Mary. She is a virgin, which fulfills Isaiah 7, 14. And both she and Joseph are from David's line, David's house, which fulfills 1 Chronicles 7, 13, as well as Isaiah chapter 11, as well as Isaiah chapter 9, many passages. So he is saying, uh, Gabriel, that is, is saying, Mary, God is sending his Messiah and he's going to do it through you. He put it this way, verses 32 to 33 say, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. These promises were made to the Jewish people, and will and all of them will be fulfilled literally one day, just as the promises is in verses 30 and 31 were fulfilled literally in that day. So while Mary was a godly woman, it was God's grace that chose her to be the mother of Jesus. As one author said, she's blessed among women, but she is not blessed above women. This was not the, what, what happened here. This miraculous conception was, was not the result of sexual intercourse between God the Father and Mary. As the Mormons teach, no, not that at all. This again was a miraculous conception accomplished by God the Holy Spirit. This is how the eternal, holy, perfect Son of God could come into the world without the stain of original sin. And Mary knowing that misunderstanding, knowing that even shame was awaiting her for what was about to take place. She, she accepted God's will for her life as a faithful servant. Now, Mary visits Elizabeth, thir verses 39 to 56. We don't know if Elizabeth was Mary's aunt or a cousin, but she is a relative, which means what? It means that John the Baptist and Jesus were also relatives, right? Now, supernatural things begin to happen as soon as she arrives, right? The baby leaps with joy inside of his mother's womb, Elizabeth, John the Baptist, that is. Elizabeth is filled with the Spirit. She gives Mary the title, the mother of the Lord, and she makes this commendation, these great words about her commitment to God. Unlike uh, Zechariah at the beginning, who didn't trust in the Lord, Mary trust in the Lord. There's a contrast there that, that's being shown. Mary clearly knows the Old Testament. I wonder if we could write a song with as much scripture as she does in this, in this passage, which is called the Magnificat. Um, there are at least 15 Old Testament texts that are either quoted or alluded to in this song. Also, count how many times she says the words, he has, referring to what the Lord has done. This is what she is praising him for. She's praising God for his activity. Now, activity where? Well, notice verse 47, God is her savior, meaning she needed salvation from her sin. And notice verse 55. She's referring here to the covenant that God made with Abraham and continued to reiterate with Abraham's descendants throughout the Old Testament. And that, that, um, that promise is to bless Israel. So she is praising God for promises that he made that she expects to be literally fulfilled. And listen, you can do the same thing. If God said it in his word, he will do exactly as he says he will do. You can trust him. You can rest in exactly what his word says because he will fulfill his word to the letter. He did in the first coming of Jesus and he will do it in the second coming of Jesus. 
So stay faithful to him no matter what. So thanks for being here. I hope that was helpful. See you tomorrow for the dramatic conclusion of Luke chapter 1.